All right, this is an explanation of the calipers and measuring uh, worksheet that's in your um, inventor tab. Um, as you can see, it's a project lead the way document activity 1.3.3 precision measuring. Um, precision measuring is a very important skill that we're going to need, especially when we get into some of our stuff with inventor. Um, to do this and to walk you through this, um, I actually have a PowerPoint that I'm going to explain. It's going to be some quick guided notes. Um, this would be a great time for you guys to split screen so that you can see the video in one and yours, your worksheet in the other. Um, remember to do that. All you really have to do is grab this like little purple area here, click hold, push it to one wall, you see that little snap, let go, and then you should be able to pick um, my video or the PowerPoint or whatever you want to use to open it. Um, while you're in here, don't worry about actually opening this part. Um, really not that worried about it. Feel free to go ahead and um, type directly on top of this when you do your answers. That'll probably just be the easiest way to do it. Um, you'll see when we get down here, there's actually going to be what's called a caliper. I'm going to explain this in a second. But you can just type right on here when you're labeling these parts. So um, feel free to use that instead. We'll go over this stuff through the PowerPoint. So um, a caliper, uh, we'll get to that. Precision measuring is awfully important because it allows us to do a couple different things. Um, we can be very precise, which is precision. Um, we can see really within the thousandth of an inch how big something is or how close something is. Um, it also makes it repeatable. So when you get really, really precise measurements, then you always know what it's going to be over and over and over again. Whereas if you just say one inch, it might be tough to get the same results over. So um, this says a precision measuring instrument will be uh, will give you nearly the same results every time. And it will, because when you start measuring things down to the thousandth of an inch, it's going to be very, very precise and very, very repeatable. Again, these uh, particular answers are all on your worksheet. They're the first parts. If I can get this to scroll down a little bit. It's going to take a second. Either way, there's guided notes down there. Couple different rules are tools that we can use for precision measuring. There's a steel ruler, which is very similar to a normal ruler, but as you can see, it gets um, quite a bit more than just a couple different lines. You can get all the way down. This measures it down to the 32nd of an inch. Uh, a micrometer, this will get you really, really close down to fractions. So you can see down here it's 1 8, 1 3 8, all that stuff to the decimal points. So this will get you really close. But for what we're going to use in this class is actually something called a caliper. There's two different types of calipers. There's a digital caliper, which obviously gives you a digital readout, and a dial caliper. We will use the dial calipers. We have about 20 of these. You might not all have enough to have your own, but easily enough to share. Um, as you can see, there's a couple different functions, um, these crazy claw looking tools. There's this thing that comes out the back. We're going to explain that in a second. There's a dial in the center. That's where you get to your thousandth of an inch. This is a really popular engineer, engineering tool. Um, they use these hundreds of times um, throughout their weeks. So the different parts of the caliper. The top part, these top claws, are the inside measuring faces. What happens is you can push these together, and then when you start to spread it, it gives you a very accurate measurement from the outside of this flat edge to the outside of this flat edge. So this is really handy when you're measuring the inside of something. So like the inside of a cup or an inside of a Lego or something that might have some sort of open cavity. You would be able to close this, fit this inside, push it apart and see exactly how big that opening is. You have the actual dial itself and the dial is split and this is obviously not a great picture but it's split up and you can see 0, 10, 20, 30. These are the thousandths of an inch so this would be your hundredth of an inch and down here you'll see in a second you have your tenth of an inch so you're splitting your tenths and then your thousandths of an inch so that all comes on the dial. Okay. The next part is something called a clamp screw what this allows you to do is when you make a very fine measurement you can just tighten this and then your caliper won't move when you go to read it. Um, 
don't have to do this all the time, but it's not a bad idea because sometimes even when you're measuring to the thousandth of an inch, even the slightest movement can throw off your measurements. This is called the blade. <clears throat> this um, actually moves in and out as your caliper goes. It also allows you to measure this way as well. So let's say you can't fit, or this fissure measures the width of an opening. This could measure the depth of an opening. So when you pull this apart, this part, this blade pops out, and you can see exactly how deep something is um, up to the extent of the ruler, so about, or the caliper, about eight inches or so. Then we have the fine adjustment screw. What this allows you to do is when you've got an object in between the, the calipers, the faces there, you can push it fairly close, but if you push this even just a little bit, you're kind of going to get down to those thousandths of an inch, and it's going to get you the most precise possible. Um, the dial adjustment screw, again, is just going to allow you to reset this just in case that ever gets thrown off. And then your ones right here are your outside measuring face, which is probably the one you use the most. You'll see two flat edges on the inside of these calipers. When you put an object in between those, tighten it down, it'll give you your measurement. So make sure you have these names on that part of the worksheet down below. I don't know why it's not letting me. There we go. Make sure you get this stuff labeled. Okay, all that stuff is on here. You just got to make sure you label that down. Um, as far as the blade and dial gradations, we're going to look at that back here. So when you read a dial caliper, it's actually fairly simple if you don't overthink it. So when you look at a dial caliper, precision measuring instrument, the caliper blade graduations are in inches and tenths. So the blade, meaning this part right here, will tell you the inches and the tenths of an inch. So down to 1.1, 1.2. So make sure you have this right here. Graduate Blade graduations are in inches and tenths of inches. Okay, so when you have an opening and you start to open this up, you'll see that there are bigger numbers that are a little bit darker. These are the inches. So one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. And in between, we have our tenths of an inch. So this would be, right here would be one inch, 1.1 inches. This would be 2.5 inches, 4.1. You kind of get the, the idea. Each inch is broken up into 10 one inch, 0.1 inch parts. Pretty simple. Then when we get to the dial caliper, reading the actual caliper, the gradations are in the thousandth of an inch. So again, back here, thousandths of an inch. You could also just do 0 .001. That would work as well. So you have to keep track of what tenth you're on. So right here you can see the tenth is exposed. The eight, you can kind of start to see the eight, but it's not fully exposed and you can't see the line. So in this case, you would be dealing in that tenth of an inch. And so then you would have, I don't, I don't have a way to draw this. So your point, your first decimal place would be 0.7 because it's right there. Then the next two dial places, you would just read the caliper. So obviously this caliper is between 30 and 40. If you count the clicks, you're at about 37. So this first digit would be the 7. The next two digits would just be 37, just like you're reading. So if there was an object here, this would literally just be reading 0.737. Um, I know that's kind of weird, and of course it would be easier if I were there showing it to you. So if you get confused on this part, please stop the video and ask. Um, like it says, the reference edge will keep track of larger increments. The dial does the really, really small ones. Again, one full revolution of the pointer, that is one-tenth of an inch. So if this goes all the way around, that just moves you one-tenth of an inch over. <clears throat> Pretty precise. So then when we get down here, <clears throat> now it says that again, one revolution all the way around is one-tenth. So one time around equals one of these little clicks right in here. Reading a caliper. You always, always, always read from left to right, basically. So you're going to read the inches. So the bigger number first always goes in your first decimal places. And we go to 1 to 6 inches. So the first, absolute first step is always, always, always read the inches. So step one, 
read the inches. Okay. Step two, we're going to look at the digital marks. Or not the digital marks. You're going to read the tenth of an inch. So if we zoom in, here's our inch, here's our tenth. So we would be at 2.3. So you can see right here, this is already at 2.3. Okay. So inches first, then the tenths. So back here, so if you do read the inches first up here, this one would be reading the tenths. So the marks on the blade. Your next part is you're going to read the thousandths of an inch. Okay? So step three, read the thousandths of an inch. So you're going to go inches to the tenths and then whatever's on the caliper. So as you can see here, and I'll try to get it so you can see the numbers. You can see where the inch mark is right here on the caliper. Obviously it's the bigger two, the rest are lower. So it's two inches, so that's your two point. You're always going to go point after your inches. Then you identify your tenths. This is obviously right in between the three and the four. So 2.3. Okay, it's right there, three. Then all you have to do is read the dial for your last two digits. Okay, it's obviously going to be somewhere between 0, 1, and 99, basically. So 2 point, the three comes here. And then the 28 is that's just where your calipers is pointing at. So 2.328. So whatever would be in these blades right here would actually be 2.328 inches. So read the inches, read the tenths, read the thousandths. So big number on the blade, little number on the blade to the dial. Pretty simple. Okay. So dial calipers on the, can be used to measure the thickness of things or the outside di diameters. So that's the dial calipers are these bottom things right here on the bottom. That's how you measure the thickness or the outside diameter of an object. So again, what kind of measurements can you make? Thickness, outside diameter, the inside of... A diameter or space width is possible. Again, you can add the thickness and depth. So these two things need to be on that sheet. You can also measure the depth of things using the outside part of the blade. And step distance. So see this little uptick? You could put the blade down in here or you could just press this flat and move that. We don't use that very often. But these are the four different bullet points that need to be on this part right here. So, thickness, or outside diameter, inside diameter, space width, depth, and step distance. So, on the bottom of this, you have a couple discussion questions. Or actually, these are questions we were going to supposed to talk about as a group. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, when you get to after your guided notes are done, it's going to ask you just to practice reading your caliper. So again. This one has the two, but you'll notice the tenths aren't labeled, so you have to identify that for yourself. This is the exact same example we just had. So two point, looks like three, so two point three, and then read the dial, three eight. Okay, so then practice with this one, that one, and that one. Um, do the best you can on these conclusion questions. And the last part. I'm going to have a bunch of objects set out or somewhere, probably on a desk in the back. You're just going to come grab one at a time, explain what the item is that you're going to measure it, and make sure you explain what you're going to measure on that. So you're obviously not going to measure the entire object in all three dimensions, but you know, if it, like it says, paperclip thickness, tell me what you're measuring. So if it's a post it notepad, Tell me you're going to do the thickness, or you're going to do outside diameter, or whatever it might be. So when it says correct or my measurement, um, that's if you wanted to use like a, a normal one. Let's see, use the dial first. Call it the chart. Um, oh, this is just what you think it is. Eventually, we're going to go maybe look as a class. Honestly, for the correct measurement, do the best you can on it. I'll have some of that stuff later. So pick the item, tell me what, you're, what part you're going to measure, tell me what you found, 
leave this part blank for right now. Okay, so that's calipers and measuring. Have fun.